one will both take care. Let me give you some context for this video. So a few days ago, I was in the data pack section in Planet Minecraft when it came by this one called Civilization's Beginnings. And its description, it read, Inspired by the video, the problem with simulating societies in Minecraft YouTube. When I clicked on it, I would see this video here by Joyful. In this video, he exclaims and talks about the various problems that the whole Minecraft Civilization video genre has. Mainly being that many, if not most of them, are produced to seem or talk as if they're a social experiment. Yet, results and conclusions yielded by these videos are generally very unrealistic, untruthful, or sometimes even skewed by the creators and participants of these events. Joyful attributes a lot of this problem to the fact that Minecraft as a game is not very, well, realistic. Its progression system can be done extremely quick, there is no need for group-based cooperation, and individualism is often way better for routes you take if you want to progress. Which is very much unlike real life, where humans would never realistically be able to survive if they didn't band together to groups, gatherings, and tribes. After watching the video and looking at the data pack, I felt very inspired to say the least. I wanted to do something relating to it, so I said, You know what? I think I can one-up this guy. And so that's what I did. For the next short three days, I would begin making a project which I'm calling Overly Realistic. The point of Overly Realistic is, well, it's not very hard to figure out. The name gives it away pretty well. It should be Overly Realistic. You see, humans are quite fragile beings. They don't quite have the beats of a jaguar or the strength of a bear or the size of a mammoth. In fact, we almost went completely extinct around 900,000 years ago. But early humans did prove to be really versatile. Due to the fact that they couldn't survive alone, they would group together. Living without another human meant you would surely die. In Joyful's video, he presented the example of anxiety and social significance, which is a huge factor in a human's life that is very deeply created evolutionarily. In real life, it's extremely difficult to provide for yourself all of your material needs by yourself, and therefore why humans necessarily form social relations of production to be able to produce in sufficient quantities the material requirements of life. This is why social anxiety is rooted in our DNA, because our ancestors who were scared of being shunned or exiled by their tribe would be biologically incentivized to cooperate and to form these relations to avoid being left to fend for themselves. So the main core idea of this project was make it as hard as possible to survive alone. Make players need others to be able to thrive, to be able to live or progress in the game. Make the game, well, realistic maybe even too over realistic so what does this project change exactly first of all players are now way weaker and way less able to do simple tasks oh do you want to break a whole meter of dirt with your bare hands in within like three nanoseconds good luck with that you want to break something four and a half meters away did you forget your arm's length you want to do a quintillion joules of force worth of damage for pig nice try when you press F5, it becomes introspective instead. Second of all, genetics. Players' block breaking speed, attack damage, health, movement speed, and many other stats are now randomly generated when the player responds. This gives a massive advantage to tribal systems and societies of players. If you're playing as a group and say you want to go hunting, you can simply send the players who have higher attack damage and health stats, but while players who have higher block rating speed and lower defense or attack can become gatherers, which would obviously be way harder for players who choose to survive solo. You might have like a good skill, but you will forever be hindered by your worst wins, uh, or you might roll a net zero for every skill as well, in which case, I think the game is trying to tell you something. Another thing that Joyful talked about in his video was the usage of building, as well as homes. Building in Minecraft isn't exactly a mandatory action. Sure, it can protect you from mobs, but so can placing a few torches in the ground. You could just live in the middle of a forest if you wanted to. Building isn't required or useful unless there's like a strict expectation that it should be. So I thought, well, why would you want to make a home in real life? Well, homes protect you from the harsh environment from outside while providing a safe and comforting area in the inside for you to live in. This ties into my next few features. Illnesses, temperature, overhauled fauna, hygiene, and sanity. Fun fact. One of the most common causes of death for both early and modern humans is illnesses. In my project, I decided that this would be a big incentive for players to watch out for themselves and their peers. Illnesses in overly realistic can be acquired through your various variables. If your health is low, if you're standing on dirty blocks like dirt or mud, if you're outside in the wild, if you're not using armor, if the temperature of a place is too high or too low, if you're bleeding, yes you can bleed, but we'll talk about this later, or if the player ate raw meat. Illnesses will give you poison and hunger for a randomized amount of time 
times uh, spanning from around 30 seconds to about a few minutes. Your quote-unquote status can be seen in your HUD, which will inform you if you're ill. Another part of your HUD is temperature. Everyone has their own party temperature, which spans from 0 to 100, 0 being extremely cold and 100 being extremely hot. Temperature can be controlled by the, bio the players in by position, uh, if they're on fire, or water, or snow, if they're near a campfire or torch, if they're outside at noon or nighttime, if they're outside while it's raining or snowing, if they have armor on, etc. Another system that contributes to the importance of housing is the new fauna changes found in the game. Usually in Minecraft, it's not very hard to get food. Uh, I wanted to change that. See, common animals are now a lot stronger and have a larger chance to be naturally aggressive towards the player, making hunting and even just walking through the wilderness way tougher, especially if you're alone. Not only that, all kinds of food are a lot harder to get. Finally, we have hygiene and sanity. The former is controlled by what you expect, uh, being outside in the wild or inside, wearing or not wearing armor, being too cold or too hot, being in water or in dirty environments, etc, etc. The latter, sanity, is quite an interesting mechanic. While the previously mentioned features can be found in the HUD, sanity is not. Sanity can be improved by being in comforting areas they would usually find in homes, like atop carpets, on beds, on wool, etc. As well as by sleeping, being near other players, or by using certain items. Though it can also be reduced, being low on stats like temperature, hygiene, health, hunger, or not having any players nearby, taking damage, bleeding, killing a player, watching a player die can all be things that decrease your sanity. And if your sanity is too low, special events can happen. You can hear random sounds around you like creepers, portals, lava, cows, etc. Hear random particles, take zero damage randomly, receive random minor effects, and much more. So, well, housing is now an important part of the game, so what? You can just build a little house in 3 seconds, right? Right? Well, not really. First of all, to balance the new importance of homes, I also implemented a new system for building as well as an overhaul to progression. See, there is now applied gravity for the blocks you place, so if you don't have proper structure to support them, they will fall. If you have proper structure, the block you're placing needs to either not have air below them or be connected to a block which doesn't have air below them, or you need to build supports with logs, which are the only blocks now that don't adhere to the system. Making building quite interesting, really, as you need to design these supports first before actually building your structure. But also, logs are now harder to get, and really, a lot of items are now harder to get, as I have overhauled the progression system of the game, so what does progression look like now? When you spawn in, you'll realize two things. It's very hard to break blocks, and logs aren't dropped when you break them with your fist. Instead, what you want to do is scavenge for and find gravel, harvest it until you get four flint, craft them together to get a flint flake, point any hard rock like stone with a flint flake in your hand to break little chunks of it. After a while of doing this, it'll turn to a sharpened flint. Afterwards, you'll want to get sticks and vines. You can do this by breaking leaves, which have a chance to drop either of those items. You can also break vines themselves for a chance to drop itself. After you have them, you'll want to hunt down an animal for leather. This can be hard, but you have some tools at your disposal. You can craft short bowls with vines and sticks. Short bowls are just like bows, but they have a lot less durability. You can also craft leaf traps, which you can place down. If an entity walks over leaf traps, they will break and let the entity fall. Once you have a piece of leather, a vine is taken a sharpened flint, you can make a stone hatchet. With the stone hatchet, you can break logs successfully. And then you put it in your crafting slots only to realize you would just wasted 5 hours of your life. You see, you can no longer craft planks from logs. First of all, what you want to do is hold down right click with the stone hatchet while looking at a log. This will slowly strip the log from its bark, which turns it into a stripped log, which you can then harvest and craft into planks. Animals also drop bones when killed, which you can craft into sharpened bones with flint. Sharpened bones provide decent attack damage while allowing you to swing quickly. When you get true leather and true planks, you can craft a crafting table. You can break planks to get sticks. Dropping 10 sticks in the ground will make an unlit campfire. Crafting two sticks together will get you a fire starter, which you can attempt to light a campfire with. You can do this by clicking continuously on a campfire until it's lit. This process can also be quite slow, so you should probably not let your fire die out, which can happen by the way. You'll need to throw flammable items into the campfire to increase the time of the flame. You can use the campfire to cook your food as well as turn clay into bricks. With bricks, you can make decorated bots, which are needed if you want to make chests. With 9 bricks, you can craft a brick block, which is needed if you want to craft a furnace. Bundles can now be crafted with 1 leather and 1 string, or 8 leather and 1 vine. With the furnace, you can small sand to get glass, and with glass and clay, you can get glass bottles. With glass bottles, you can get dirty water from river spawns in the ocean, which you can put in a furnace to get clean water, which then you can drink to replenish your thirst, a new system added by the project. With planks and sticks, you can craft your wooden tools normally and you get cobblestone to craft stone tools, although you'll also need to insert string and leather to craft them successfully. This also applies to iron tools. 
Speaking of iron, an iron also crafts chainmail armor, which you can then play with more iron to get a full suit of iron armor. Iron armor is the best type of armor you can possibly get, as diamond and netherite armor and tools are not disabled. Beds now also need feathers and leather, boats need wooden shovels for battles, torches need leather, and crafting bread is now a little harder, as you now need water and sugar to get raw bread, which you can then bake into baked bread. Another implemented system is stamina, meaning you can get tired the more you move around. All of this obviously plays into making the game slower. In fact, the day-night cycle is now a lot slower as well, allowing players to make the most out of the time they have. Okay, well, the game does seem significantly harder to play alone now, but you can still surely survive pretty decently. If you're low, just eat some steak and you're up to pro alt again, right? Well, no really. Some other systems I've implemented include physical trauma, bleeding slash blood, which we mentioned earlier, and death changes. Physical trauma derives from great injuries like falling from tall heights, being mauled by wild animals, or being struck by other players. Any potent amount of damage done to a player can lead to permanent physical injuries and traumas. This includes crippling of the limbs, which can cause you to move slower and make jumping impossible, blindness when injuring your eyes or face, and slower attack damage, simulating injuries to your arms and hands. These are permanent debuffs that stay with you until you die, which makes you much more reliant on your peers if you ever receive such thing. Bleeding also happens when getting injured. When a player animal is damaged, it will display blood on the ground where they got damaged at. Though this doesn't necessarily mean they have the bleeding effect. Bleeding can of course happen from damage, especially if it was a potent amount of damage absorbed, and it makes you display bleeding particles every few moments, as well as release continuous blood on the ground. When bleeding, the player is much more susceptible to illnesses, though it can be solved through time or by using a new item called a bandage. A natural regeneration of health is now a lot slower and more complex, as it relies on all of the systems mentioned previously. If you're too cold or too hot, if you're dirty or if you're outside, or low health or low hunger or low thirst, a natural regeneration will be significantly slower for you. Finally, we also have the new death mechanics. When a player dies, they will drop their heads, some meat, and some bones. They will also be made a ghost. What this means is simply that they will be put into spectator mode and are forced to spectate a random nearby player, if any are available. You can, however, respawn ghosts. You can craft a diamond ring, which you can right-click while looking at another player. This will allow you to reproduce with another player, which spawns a random nearby ghost at your location. The ghost will receive new genetics and will have any of their previous items with them anymore. I also implemented an optional player slot system, which only ever allows a max amount of players to join normally until the point is reached, at which point all the next players that join will be ghosts, unless they are spawned in with player reproduction. Though again, the system is quite optional, and you can disable it in the settings. Anyways, these were the core features of the project. There was actually quite a bunch of minor features which I didn't want to include as should not make this video 3 hours long, but you can see them in the screen right now. So now that I've told you about all these changes, how would an in-game society or group of players fare in such conditions that are brought by this project? Our first test subject today is gonna be my friend Ashen. I wanted to first get how a solo player would survive and then try the same experiment out with a group or rather a tribe of players. So Ashim is gonna be our solo survivalist, so how did he do? Well, as expected, not that great. He managed to die 4 times in a span of 30 minutes, mostly due to either illnesses or attacks from wild animals. He did manage to progress a little bit, but not that much, relatively speaking. I do reckon this is pretty much what you would realistically expect if you were to do this experiment in a real setting, as humans are not made to be able to survive alone at all. Survival stories of lone persons, while memorable and bold, are very few and far between. Next, I experimented with a tribal slash group living situation. This actually proved to be much more manageable, and the results yielded from this were much more fruitful. Progression became tough yet easier than the formerly mentioned experiment, stamping the project as a success. The clean cut between the individualistic difficulty of survival and the living conditions of a herd are very obvious when using this project, making one way more favorable than the other exactly like what you would expect and what you would see in real human-filled environments. Anyways, thank you for watching everyone. I managed to procrastinate this video a little less, so hopefully that's a good sign. Comment down below what I should do next. I'll see you guys later, okay bye.